Next thing we're gonna check is our emergency equipment. To get to that, we need to rotate this mirror down. On this mirror, it only goes up and down. It does not go left or right. Please use two hands to move the mirror. Otherwise, it breaks very easily. In our emergency equipment, we have our first aid kit. And it does not have a zip tie. Since it does not have a zip tie, we would need to pull that out, open it up, and count the number of items inside. Wow. So in order to not have to do that, the next time we do this, we're gonna make sure we have a zip tie on that. Next is our fire extinguisher, securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, making sure it's charged. Never take for granted that it stays charged. Always making sure that's in the green. And last but not least, making sure it's not expired. This was done in July of 2021, so it is good for one year. From there, we're also going to the body fluid kit. Again, we need a zip tie on this so that we know that it has all of the necessary uh, supplies inside of it and that it is present. So once again, we will be getting zip ties and putting on this. If there are not zip ties, you should open it up, making sure all of the supplies are present. It's in a sealed bag. It's not leaking. But once again, a zip tie would verify that for you. Same thing with your first aid kit. You would open it, you would count, making sure you didn't have uh, any missing contents. Be sure and push in on that spring to release that door. Don't just force it. Next, we're gonna turn around and we always want to make sure that we have our seat belt cutter. This one happens to be down here. What is it? At the very bottom. It is your seat belt cutter. Cutter. It needs to always be within reach of Where's the that? driver. What's that? It's right here. Let me look at it real quick. So if you were ever in an accident and for some reason the belt couldn't release, you would have that. You could slice the webbing and be released out of your seat belt. And the last bit of our emergency equipment is down here where we have three emergency triangles. And we would want to make sure those triangles were there. And we also need to state that if this bus ran on fuses, that is where the fuses would be kept. The spare. Yeah, spare. Spares. Yeah, okay. Spare fuses and the triangles, yes. three triangles. Yes. Next, we're gonna go to our student area and check our emergency exit. For this, the bus has to have the key on. Put it to just the first turn, the first click. So we're gonna go to the first click. Okay. We're not gonna start it. We just need it so that it has power. And now we're actually going to walk our bus. As we walk, we're going to shape each of the seats. We are making sure they are securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, that none of the upholstery has tears in it and is vandalized, has graffiti. So we're gonna shape every single seat as we go. And then as we come to our emergency exits, we're going to stop. We're going to identify our exits. This is the hatch. It has its instructions and it opens and the alarm buzzes. These hatches can be used uh, while you're driving. They can be up. You can have either the back up all the way down. So these can be up so that we have airflow. Then you stop at your next emergency exit. Instructions, opens, buzzes. Keep going, shaking your seat. Emergency exit, instructions, opens, buzzes, all the way to the back of the bus. Emergency exit, instructions, buzzes. Keep going, emergency exit, instructions. 
opens, buzzes. Emergency exit instructions, opens, buzzes. Keep going back till we get to the very back to our emergency door. The emergency door is marked, has a head bump. If you look up at Bill, you also will see a head bump up at our door entrance. You want to make sure that both of these head bumps are in place. No missing nuts or bolts. And last but not least, back to the door. Instructions. Open your door. And it buzzes. Now as you're going forward. And if it doesn't? If it doesn't, with the emergency exits, your emergency exits are required to buzz. And so you would want to go and uh, do a write up on that. I see you looking at your child check switch. This we will talk about a little bit later, but this is uh, so that we do not have children left on the bus at the end of the run. Your bus, the horn will honk, the lights will flash. If you turn off your bus, pull out your keys and open the door. So once you turn off your bus, you take out your keys and before opening the door you come back you push this button it deactivates the alarm we hope oh so that, that makes you, you come back and look and before you and can... we hope that you are paying attention as you're coming back as you're coming back and that you would see a child sleeping or hiding on the bus <laughs> as we go forward then we're going to check and we're going to make sure that all of these seat bottoms are securely attached you're going to be looking at the back, making sure there's no graffiti, making sure again the kids haven't poked holes with their pencils or, you know, made any spices in our seats. You're also going to check as you walk, making sure in the aisleway you don't have any tripping hazards. Could include garbage that's been left that needs to be cleaned, could be torn rubber, could be screws sticking up on the trim, and if that's the case, even the trim bench. So here we go. And we're checking each one of our seat bottoms and checking the backs for our artists. For our artists? Our artists who have drawn on the back of our seats. <laughs> or as Bill says, if you come to one and it says Bill is the number one driver. Leave it there. He That's says good. we leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from here we're going to go to the driver's area. At the driver's area, we're going to make sure that our seat is securely attached. No missing nuts or bolts. You want to sit down. You want to make sure that Sorry, this Bill. seat is adjusted for you. You've got the red button here that raises or lowers it. This gray button is your lumbar. So make sure that you get this set so that your feet are flat with no pressure underneath your legs here. That might make your legs go to sleep. You want to make sure that you can push in on the service brake all the way. For me, I'm extending too far on this, so I have two choices. I can meet, move my seat forward, or I can also adjust my pedals out. Yeah. And you just want to make sure it's really important. This brake will not release if that service brake is not fully pushed in. So if you're overextending that leg, you may not get it to release and you're going to fight releasing your parking brake. So make sure you can really push in with that. Once you've got your seat set, you want your seat belt. Seat belt, again, you have to mention, it is secure. There is no fraying in the webbing. I like to say these are your three S's so that it helps you remember when to start the bus. There's always questions. You can't remember when to start the bus. Sit down, seat belt, now start the bus. Remember on our propanes, we're gonna start from the start position again. You go one click, there is a wait to start. As Soon as that wait to start has gone off, click and release and you let the bus start itself. Always make sure it's in neutral, parking brake is pulled, you do not need your feet on the service brake. Okay. What and, will they think of next? Oh, I know. Drive themselves. The remotes. Hey. Yeah, that's, that's realistic. As soon as the bus <laughs> starts, first thing Mr. Snoozy wants to hear us say is that our oil pressure rose. Doesn't have to be any certain posi position, but we do want to see 
rise so that we know that we've got oil pressure. We also want to check our volts. It needs to be between 12 and 14 and a half. Just to be safe, I cover every single one of our instruments here. So I start, I look at my fuel, making sure I have plenty of fuel, making sure that once again the oil's risen, our RPMs, our bolts, transmission, temperature, our uh, miles per hour, our temperature on our engine, and making sure that our air tanks show that our gauges are working, they have risen. Once we've done that, once again, I'm trying to get us in an order so we don't forget anything. So I started at the top, my student mirror, student mirror, I want to make sure it's securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, that the mirror itself is clean, not cracked or broken, and we cannot have any extra uh, stickers on this mirror. After the mirror, you, the next thing you see is the visor, securely attached. Next thing we talk about is I just keep coming down. The windshield, making sure from the inside, once again, I don't see any cracks, any rock chips at all in here. As I look out my windshield, the next thing I see are my mirrors. From the inside, I am making sure that these mirrors aren't cracked, broken, or missing. And then we make sure that they're going to be set correctly for us, which we will talk about later. Once we've gotten to this point, I tell you to let your fingers do the walking. If you let your fingers go and you just activate each switch, you won't miss anything. This here is just a button for our cameras. Uh, pushing that red button is going to mark the tapes if there's an incident, something that we have to look at on your tapes. You come in, you say that uh, you started having a student fight, which we very rarely see, but you just had two students scuffling in the back. Push that button. When you get back to the lot, you'd come in and tell us, and that would help Mr. Snoozy identify where to check. Next is our heat pump. On this, you can hear a little bit of a hum. More than anything, you want to state that with the heat pump, if I wanted heat, that pump would have to be on. Next, we're just going to go to our heaters. You do not necessarily have to identify where the heater is, just that the switch works. So we're going to go heater. There's low, high, off. Just keep moving your fingers. Low, high, off. Low, high, off. I only go as far as here. I come down. These are just vents. We are checking things that actually have motors to them. This is our defrost. On this, we want low, medium, high, and we actually need to put our hands up here, and we need to actually feel and make sure that we feel air movement. It's the one place you're required to actually make sure that you feel that air. Then you can take it back to off. This is just your fresh air return. So we're gonna come back here and do all of our switches. Fan, low, high. Off. Next fan, low, high, off. Those work really nice in the summer. Is a little bit of air conditioning for the driver. Their main purpose though is during the winter to turn them towards your windows and it helps with keeping your windows defrosted. Next thing we come to, I'm gonna turn those back on, is our noise suppressant. This is used mostly for railroads so that we can hear for a train. It's gonna turn off your fans, it's gonna turn off your radio, it's gonna turn off your heaters. This is your mirror defroster. It's just a toggle switch. Bill, how long does this stay on, do you remember? It's a momentary contact and your heaters will stay on for 15 minutes. So that helps defrost your mirrors for you. Next thing we're gonna come to is we're going to check our student lights. So anytime that you have lights on the outside, you also have an indicator on the inside. So not only do we always wanna make sure that our outside lights work, we wanna make sure that our indicator lights work too so that as the driver, you can see that they're working. And if you all notice here right above Bill as he comes in, this is our emergency door release. If that button is in the open position, you can open the doors by just pushing on them. Right now it's in the closed position. The only way that it's gonna open and close 
is by air. When I close that, Bill can push as hard as he wants, but he cannot open those doors. Push, Bill. Oh, I can. <laughs> Don't push that hard, Bill. <laughs> Don't break it. Bill. So, we're going to come back <laughs> no, here. No, you should have said Bill can push as hard as you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. So, once again, these are the student warning lights telling the public, be prepared. I'm going to stop to either Yellow, pick up a kid. Amber. Yes, or drop them off. So, we want three places to check whenever we activate. Right here is number one. That needs to be blinking. If it is solid, we either have a light out or an electrical issue. So we want to state it's blinking here. That's number one. Number two is up what's called a Duran. It is not 100% accurate, but we check it and it is in the probably the high 90% range of being accurate. And number three, if you look in these mirrors in the front of us, you can also see that they are working on the front of our bus. So those are the three places that we will check those lights. Now, in order to get your yellows to activate to red for the public, telling them they are required to stop, all you do is hit your service door. You're gonna see right here, we wanna state that once again, our red uh, interior indicator light is working, that our Duran shows they're working front and back that we can again use those mirrors we can see that the reds are blinking on the front of our bus and two extra things that we can check here it's making sure that the door actually opened so that we know that our door switch worked and we see that our stop sign is activated once again we're going to check this at a later period of time i'm now going to close it good night Kate. So, if you want to open your door without having your child lights, you just don't push this button. This opens and closes and your reds don't come on. But if we are going to have our student lights activated, you've got to do your yellow, which will then automatically activate the reds. The next set of switches we're going to check are these. And once again, just do it and look in your student mirror and see what it activates. There we go. There is our dome light right over our head. Shut it off. Next one. There we go. On the right side, our student lights, uh, interior dome lights on the passenger side. Hold on. Okay. That went off. Next, passenger student lights on the driver's side. The one in the back is out. Here we go. You ready? There it is. Ta-da! Oh, ta-da! What'd you push? So that was the very Emergency. last switch. Oh, the rear. Turn it on. The yep. rear. The rear, and that activates those last two lights on each side. Okay. This is gonna be fun to edit. Trust me. <laughs> After that, we're gonna come up. And the next thing we're gonna come to is our uh, PA for talking to our students. Make sure you get the. Sit down. <laughs> exactly. So making sure you grab. Don't make me come back there making sure you grab the correct mic. I will not tell you how many times, oh, and God, I promise <laughs> you will pick this up and you will say, please sit down. And you're gonna hear I'm Bill sure. come over and say, but bus driver, I am sitting down <laughs> or wrong radio. So make wrong sure, mic. or wrong mic, excuse yeah. me. So make sure you grab the correct mic. Interior, check, check. You were on. Could you hear it? You don't have to turn the radio up for them. But you could hear it? Check, check. There, there go. we go. With those, they're cheaper. You gotta get closer to your mouth. And up to the top more. Then put it on exterior, open it, check, check. I could hear an echo. And then put it back to interior so that you're not playing the radio or yelling at the public to sit down and be quiet. <laughs> Although they need to. From here then, once again, guys, I just keep moving my hand across. The next thing I come to are my lights. I'm gonna turn them on. We can't necessarily see that they're working in the mirrors, but remember you have dim and bright. So we want to identify that our bright light indicator is working. Okay, put your hand back here and just bring it and we're gonna come up the drive shaft first thing you come to are your hazards pull them out once again one they're working here two 
they're working there. Three, we can see them in the front working. To cancel those, it is the blinker. So I just immediately go to my left blinker. One, two, three. Then switch to my right blinker. One, two, three. Keeping my hand on the blinker bar, pushing in, making sure that my wipers do wipe that uh, the fluid squirts out so that they are cleaning. All right, so as you notice, like I say, we are working our way around. We've come to the lights, we've come to the hazards, the blinkers, the wipers. The next thing your hand comes to is your steering wheel. Less than two inches of play. The wheel is not cracked, broken. Keep coming around now, horn honks. Keep coming down. You do have your cruise control. Uh, we don't talk about that. You are welcome to use it in Klamath County School District. From here, we've got our parking brake, which we're going to test here soon. So the next thing we do have is just uh, wanting to put the bus in reverse. In order to put it into any gear, service brake must be pushed in. We just want to make sure that we hear that backup beeper alarm. Back to neutral and release. Next thing I do is actually my air brake check. Reason I do my air brake check now is because at the end of the air brake check, we drive off of that chalk. And when we're out checking our lights, we then pick up the chalk and we don't forget it. So in order to prepare for your air brake check, we're gonna turn off all of our lights. Notice this little sleeping child armed alarm. Since that shows that it is activated with that red light, we're gonna turn off the bus, we're gonna pull out our keys, and Mr. Bill's gonna run back. Fuck. And run. if you watch him, he's gonna push that button. The dome lights are going to flash. That is our sign that that alarm has deactivated. You're going to notice the lights come back on. That's for your evenings so that you're not trying to get out of here in the dark. It keeps those lights on for a period of time for you to get up, get your personal things gathered and get off of the bus. Next thing we're going to do now is we continue to prepare to begin our, pre our air brake. We're going to put the key just again, first position because we need to have our air gauges and then we cannot have any brakes applied. So we're gonna release our parking brake. Remember, we have it chalked, super important. How'd you release it? Just hold it. You've gotta push it on the service brake and then push in on that. Push it. So here, that's with it applied. Push it on the service brake, push, and it releases it. Now, keeping your hands on the steering wheel so that if this was to back up, you forgot the chalk, it bounced over it, you've got control. Keep your hands on the steering wheel, slowly release until you make sure that we are safe and we're not gonna roll. We are now ready to begin our air brake. We've got our window open, we've got our gauges, all of our brakes are released. I call this the one, two, three test. It helps you remember how many pounds of pressure for each of the tests. For the first two tests, they are one minute long. So for one minute, you sit, no brakes whatsoever, and you are listening, and we are making sure that we do not lose more than two pounds of pressure. So here we sit, and we're just gonna watch this. And we're gonna sit for one minute, listening, watching that gauge. Now, for sake of your guys' camera time, your battery life, we're going to speed it ahead today. You'd sit for one minute. <coughs> At the end of that minute, you would want to state that hopefully you didn't hear any leaks and that your gauges did not drop more than two pounds. Uh, obviously, every mark on this is 30 pounds. It's gonna be kind of hard to see too. So yeah, you that just, should be digital, shouldn't it? You really just wanna make sure that those don't Move. drop at all. Next part of the test, you're gonna push in on the service brake the gauges are going to move as soon as they stabilize. Do it this, again and, and uh, now, now do it. Let's see. 
Okay, as soon as they stabilize, again, you're at that one minute, and this is where three comes in for one, two, three. One minute, making sure you don't lose more than three pounds of pressure. Again, you've got your window open so you can listen. Sometimes I have to use two feet because pushing this in, my leg is wimpy. <laughs> so sometimes I have to use the other foot. Again, end of that minute, hopefully you're stating you didn't hear any leaks and that you did not lose more than three pounds of pressure. So once again, one, two, three. One minute, two pounds of pressure with no brakes, three pounds of pressure with your service brake. After you've got that, you want to make sure that your low air alarm comes on before 60 pounds of pressure. I only had to hit it once today. And there it is. It has to be at 60 or higher, which it is. We're gonna continue to pump our service brake. We want this to pop out before 20 pounds of pressure. So here we go. So you're keeping your eye there. You're listening. There we go, it popped out. It's well above 30, which exceeds that 20 pounds of pressure. So we now know we don't have any leaks in our airlines. We don't have any leaks in our service brake. If we did have a leak, we have our low air warning. It's gonna come on before 60 saying, hey, you've got a problem. Let's say you're trying to limp it to a safe area to get off the road. And if you had a leak so bad, that you were gonna lose all of your air, it would automatically bring you to a stop before 20 pounds, okay? So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that that air compressor though is charging well enough to keep us at the required. So here we go, click, release. Wait for it to start itself. Wait for it to start itself. Once it starts, you need to have on the propanes about 2,500 RPMs. We do not care how long it takes, but once this reaches 85 pounds of pressure, we want to time and make sure that from 85 to 100, it happens within 45 seconds. So once again, I don't care how long it takes to get to 85, and I need to have it right at around that 2,500 RPMs. Another opportunity to make sure that above 60, when that low air warning goes off, which we were, and we would never want that to go off before. So right now, we are right about 85, so we would start counting using our cell phone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 85 to 100, that's the 90 mark. 85 to 100, 45 seconds. How long it takes to get to that 85, we don't care. We only care that it rises from 85 to 100 within 45 seconds. Okay, now that we have done that, the last part of our air brake check is making sure that our parking brake holds the bus and making sure our service brake works. So for this, I don't know how you guys wanna do it. Uh, for safety's down. sake, we have to ask that you sit. Okay. The wheels are chalked, right? So, but they are chalked from behind. Oh. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my tires are straight. We want to do this with our feet, not on the service brake. That way it doesn't have tension and it doesn't grind the asphalt. So what we're going to do is with the parking brake pulled, so it is applied, we're going to put it in drive. I am checking my mirrors in case it fails, making sure I don't have a bus or somebody coming next to me that it would hit. Keeping my hands on the steering wheel, we're going to give about 1,000 to 1,200 RPMs and let go. And the bus should not move, which you saw. Now we're gonna release the parking brake. So with that said, we know that the parking brake works and holds correctly, right? Now we're going to release the parking brake and we're going to go forward five to 10 miles an hour. Be prepared. I'm gonna hit the brakes very abruptly. 
I'm gonna make sure that that service brake responds immediately. It doesn't pull left or right in my hands, uh, that the brake doesn't feel mushy. So are you ready? Go ahead. Once again, I'm not gonna move right now because if I do, I could hit Bill. There we go. So I'm checking my mirrors, making sure I don't have anybody or any people. I see Wayne, where is Wayne going? Wayne's going the other side. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna pull forward. And we want that to be a firm stop. Neutral parking brake, once again stating the brakes responded immediately, didn't pull to the left or the right in my hands, and it wasn't mushy. Now, last but not least, we're going out to check all of our lights. This is what's wonderful about these propanes. We're gonna push this little button right here. We're gonna open our door and we're gonna go out. First thing we wanna mention right here, there's our step well light working. And then we're gonna come out. Okay, hold on a second. make sure every single light works and we need to identify our lights so we're going to start at the top say that our clearance marker lights are working our student yellows and red child warning and yield lights our warning lights are working next ones you see these are blinkers and hazards both are working down to our headlights we can see they're going from dim to bright they are both working and another set of, of hazards and blinkers. Once again, both sets are working. We're gonna come to the side of our bus. Watch your head, Mike. Right up here, we're gonna catch this clearance marker. It's working. We're gonna stop at our stop sign. Our stop sign has extended lights on both sides, not cracked, broken, or missing, and they are both working and the wind guard is secure. Next, we've got our left turn blinker, making sure it is working. Continuing down the side of the bus, we have another uh, clearance ID marker working, and at the very back, another clearance ID marker working. One thing you're gonna see is I'm going in an order. When you're actually doing your pre-trip, you guys are gonna create your own order. This today is taking a good 45 minutes. It really only takes 15 minutes. You're not necessarily gonna to go to this order. As you're approaching your bus and you're checking all of, you know, making sure it's not leaning and making sure you don't see graffiti and leaks on the ground, you're probably gonna stop and you're gonna check the engine right there if you're coming from the rear and it's a rear engine bus. Or you're going to go buy your tires. You're gonna stop then and look at your tires and everything's a visual. So when you're actually doing a pre-trip, it goes a lot faster, but right now, where we're actually pointing things out and talking, it takes longer. We're going to continue to the back. Again, go to the very top, work your way down, talk about everything you see. Our top clearance ID markers, all three are working. Our student warning drop off lights, both sets are indeed working. Our blinkers and hazards, they are both working. Our tail lights and brake lights, both working and our backup lights, both working. We're gonna again keep following around the other side of the bus. We've got our clearance ID marker, it's working. Our middle marker light, which is yellow, it is working. Our right turn blinker, it is working. And just above our student door as we get around the corner, our last uh, clearance ID marker light right up here is working. At this point in time, we would have pulled uh, off of that chalk and I would have picked up the chalk when I was walking around. Bill did it for us today. Guys. Thank you, Bill. Sweet. That is our pre-trip. Wow, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But if you go in order, it makes sense and it flows. It's a matter of not jumping from here to here and back up that you get lost. Find the order that works for you and go in an order. Sounds good. Okay? Very good. Good job. Get yourself a hand. Yay! 
that alarm to deactivate, you have to close the door with the air. I couldn't have been out here and just pushed the door closed for him and him run. He had to actually use the air controls to close that door, run back, push the button, and then that uh, releases it. So the only way you can do it is to have to push that. I'm gonna ask you something very important. Do these have air conditioning? No. Yeah, how many windows are there? <laughs> Plenty. And remember those fans? <laughs> Yeah, those that's, the that's your air conditioning. Why do they want to make you suffer? You know, or if you want the right answer, do they have air conditioning? Of course they don't. There you go. <laughs> you know, okay. one thing I didn't so tell you, those lights, so when we went out and we activated that switch and we went and we checked to make sure that all of those lights worked, the way that you get the lights then off, you get in the driver's seat and you just put it into gear, whether down to drive or in reverse, and that's what turns off that light check. I always forget that. Man, you forgot something. I well, I, you I get this far and you get to check in. This would be starting my second year in the propane, and guess what? Sometimes I get back to the shop. I've had a hard day at the office. I turn it off. I get the key. I hit the, the release and open the door, and the horn and lights start sounding off, and I'm like, mm, first day again. Or you have those drivers that they're like. Huh. I'm just gonna go knock on his door because he'll open it to talk to me just to see if they can make us set off those alarms. Yeah, I'm sure fun. neither of you two would ever do that. Never. Never. So, okay. alrighty. We'll go edit this. Good job.